Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. And as I promised you this morning in the daily financial news, I have been going since 8 a.m. And we've got an extra special guest for you at noon today. We have Beth. How are you doing, Beth? Hey, I'm doing great. So nice to be here. I'm super excited about this. Thanks so much. Oh, yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I love speaking with new investors who have great stories, especially folks who've been doing it quite a while. So, Beth, why don't you kind of introduce uh, the One Rental at a Time community to who you yeah. are, how you got started, where you're at? And then Fantastic. We'll yeah. So I like to say I've never had a real job, so to speak. Like I never <laughs> had this like corporate, you know, life that I had to try to get out of or anything. And I you know, kind of was going about it. it. I always kind of thought that was sort of going about it the hard way, but in some ways it's good because I was just thrown into the, you know, fire and had to sink or swim. And, you know, real estate's been my life, you know, ever since my early twenties. So I'm a real estate broker mm -hmm. um, and have been since 1998. I'm, uh, I, um, and uh, I, I'm located just outside of Seattle um, mm -hmm. in the more rural area, just to the east, like, you know, about a 30 minute drive to like the Amazon campus, for example. So okay. we have a lot of that, you know, um, I run a small, highly productive team, you know, this year we've got about 70 million in volume. Cool. And, um, but my, you know, and I love that, but my, I've always had a passion for real estate investing. And I feel like that's what I do. Like, if I was not working at all, like I would be doing the real estate investing like that just doesn't, that's where my passion lies. It doesn't feel like work. It's fun. It's just yeah. what I really love to do. And I've been doing that since, well, I mean, I bought my first house in 19, way back in 1995. And okay. when I just turned 21, I know I'm dating myself, but um, in Seattle, and I didn't really think of that as an, I didn't think of myself as being a real estate investor at that time. I was just mm -hmm. like, I want a house. I was able to get creative and make that happen um, back in the day, you know, when I didn't really have any money or any resources, you know, yeah. but, yeah. but I knew some people and actually it was, it, I mean, I was young, you know, it's like my dad helped me out. He became an equity partner in it, you know, where he basically said, let's buy this together. And we pulled our resources. I bought a house for $125,000 in Seattle. Wow. And um, I hope you still own it. Uh, you know, well, here's the thing, Michael. So I 1031 out of oh. it in 2017. Okay. Oh, so there I you go. But just to let the community know, like, this is a good way to like, get rich slow. Yeah. So basically all I had to do was just own it all that time. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, you know, I bought it for 125 and sold it in 1995 and sold it in 2017 for 775. <laughs> and, <laughs> I don't know, it's worth more than that now, you know, yeah. but, you know, I was able to roll it into a couple other investments that like better suited my goals as time yeah. moved on. But I was always of the mindset of like, never, never, never sell, right. you know, and I didn't, I thought I'm just going to own this house for the rest of my life, you know, but sometimes circumstances change and sometimes other opportunities yeah. come up, you know, so, um, but that was a really great way to get started. I know that you and some of the other, uh, you know, people that come on this show have been talking a lot about house hacking lately, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's kind of how we just kind of started chatting about that yep. a little bit too, was like, how did we get started? And I have to say my, my, for myself and almost any other investor that I know out there all seem to have started with some sort of a house hack. You know, we didn't right. even have that word back then, but it was like basically just sharing, you know, sharing, yep. sharing the expense. And I would want to encourage people getting started to not be scared of that, find a mm -hmm. way to make that work if that's what you need. Um, and I'm a, I'm very much an introvert. So I, the thought of like having somebody else in my space while I'm trying to relax and recharge would just be like, oh no, no, no. So thankfully there was a basement and I was able to outfit that out like a mother-in-law and put somebody in there that covered over half my mortgage. And so I was able to live for like 500 bucks a month, you know, I'm like, nice. okay, I can do this, even though I, you know, wasn't making much money at all at the time, but it's just a great springboard. Like you got to start somewhere. Yeah. And that, you know, was really critical for me just to get me launched. And so, but to fast forward a bit, you know, I bought my first like strictly investment property in 2002. Thankfully, um, I, I didn't know anybody in the real estate investment community, except for one person who was my uh, business partner in real estate. We worked together and he is an investor and uh, um, he's now retired and living on the beach in Spain with his kids and nice. <laughs> traveling Europe and living the life. But he was just like, Beth, you know, we had our first good year, you know, and he's like, you got to buy a house. Like, don't spend anything until you buy a house. Hmm. So we found a house, bought it, you know, rented it out. And um, 
made every mistake in the book. You know, that's probably a subject for another video, but you know, it's kind of <laughs> gives me some good stories and experiences to work with from there. You always learn, you know, but that's another one I kept for a really, really long time too. Mm -hmm. Um, and then just kind of, and then I met my husband, he's a contractor. He and I both had two, a house that we were house hacking and a rental at the time. So it was kind of like a match made in heaven where it all mm -hmm. came together. And then we just started buying other properties. This is all before the 2008 crash, right? Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So I know, you know, that time, like it was so easy. Like you just, they were handing out HELOCs like candy. Oh, it was out. literally oh. like candy. Yes. <laughs> you just walk into Wells Fargo or wherever, like in the, in the 10 minutes later, you're let you leave with a, uh, with a HELOC, you know? And yeah. so um that had its pros and cons but we did use that to buy a handful of properties you know probably about six or so before mm -hmm. 2008 and then then everything all blew up right but thankfully we weren't over leveraged we did have uh you know we were able to weather the storm relatively unscathed as far as like we didn't lose any properties or anything I, like that so i consider that a win like hey yeah. we, we got to keep our house that we live in and our houses that we you know rented and i just figured well, maybe this is it. We just stick with these and, you know, that's our retirement, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. but, and I did lose a lot of time, you know, in the market there. I mean, we kept those houses, but as far as buying new houses, that didn't really, nothing really happened <laughs> for a while there because lending <laughs> dried up, income yep. got really unstable. If you're in real estate and construction and, you know, all the, all the backup options kind of dried up and went away. Oh yeah. I remember. So yeah, but you know, we, we survived and learned some important lessons there and, um, you know, we got revved up more again in the last five years or so. Um, now we have 16 properties in the Seattle, greater Seattle nice. area, um, which I know, you know, a lot of people talk about hundreds of doors and, you know, we're not, we're not hundreds of doors, but, um, you know, it works for us. And, mm -hmm. you know, so a lot of it is single family, but some of some some small commercial and even some vacant land, we found some ways to make some money with that, um, and and like one multifamily. There aren't too many multifamilies in our area, so cool. But um, yeah. So anyway, and everything we try to buy is like something that has like some it, a value add proposition, you know, like mm -hmm. something that's up, you know, zoned for something more, and we can develop it later into something right. else. So so yeah, that's that's kind of a long answer, but like that's just my my nutshell like shortened version of what I've been doing and where I am now. And so, Very cool. yeah. Well, so let's, let's, this is fun, right? Cause we, we both been, we both been through the same kind of eras in, in real estate. Yours is even a little bit longer than mine being uh, a broker since 98. So what I remember about the dot com crash, which we'll call it 2000 to 2001, I don't know if it hit Seattle, but it hit the Bay area. It did. Yeah, yeah. it did. Real estate from a retail perspective kind of froze for like six months, like Nobody was selling. Nobody was buying. Was that kind of similar? In Very Seattle? much so. Everything came to a screeching halt for a yeah. while there because people didn't know what to do. Yeah, it wasn't like it was crashing. It was just like everybody just took a big. Yeah. Just, well, when people are scared, they don't want to make big purchases. Like, either way, or sell. Right? They don't yeah, want to or big sell. Money. They just don't know what to do. So they don't. People don't know what to do. They do nothing. Yeah. So I want that. I wanted that put out there because I think we may see a big hiccup in the stock market sometime between now and two years from now like a 20 or 30% haircut. So, and if it is tech heavy, which some of the PE say it could be price to earnings ratio, we could, but a lot of the YouTubers out there will go crash, crash, crash. Wow. And they just pause. They take a breath. They figure out what's going on. Cause in the Valley, you're not buying a house unless you're taking money from stocks most right. of the time. And I'm, I'm going to guess Seattle's a lot the Very same much way. Like that here too. So, okay. Yeah. You have to be ready for that. You yeah, know? of course. I'll be ready. I'll be like, oh, <laughs> nobody's yeah. buying. Let me go look around for it. Oh, I know. It's like, yeah. So, but people have to remember is that when the market goes down, like there's reasons why people aren't buying it. The psychology is always there, you know, like the psychology is always there. If somebody wants to find a reason to not buy now, they will also find a reason to not buy if they think prices are going down. Like, oh, catching a falling knife or, you know, I don't want to. <laughs> you know how many people buy. told me that in 2010? Yeah. Yeah. I'm buying Everybody. almost every other week and yeah. I'm buying stuff for under like under land value. Yeah. Fully like a full on house. The cheapest house I bought was 28 grand full on house. Yes, it was wrecked, but you know, 20 <laughs> grand later, it's a house again. Brilliant. F huge lot. I'm actually putting an ADU on the lot right now, or I plan to. So um, yeah. yeah, 
just here's a little interesting fun fact too so i'm not like a spreadsheet number nerd although i super respect people that are okay. but um but i did so for that 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 house i mentioned like my first house that i bought in 95 or 125,000, yeah. sold it in 2017 for yep. 775 now granted there was the biggest crash in the middle there since the great depression okay yes and if my uh remedial math skills are correct i it came out to something like 8.37 percent appreciate annual appreciation like for that entire time yeah and so like, you had cash flow and, and you had this and yes you had that. and i was able to use it as a tool to pull equity out and use yeah. for other things and buy other properties and time in the market is no, better man, than timing the market it's so true and that was a wonderful springboard you know yeah. so um so let's talk about that because yeah. so many people the the first one, even if it's your owner oc, right, which you're going to house hack or roommates like Todd Baldwin did, or, or um, any any way you get on the property, you've got to get on the property ladder, right? Yeah. And it's not ten, it's not twenty percent down. There are programs for as little as three or three and a half percent. Get yeah. creative. Look for those mm -hmm. options to have a basement like you did. And again, you weren't living for free like Dion talks about. You were living for essentially half price, right? Right. But five hundred because you got to live somewhere. Exactly. It would yeah. cost me at least that or more. And here's the other thing I want to say to people too. I've heard a lot of people like they don't want to be inconvenienced. And you know what? I, I mean, I'm not talking for everybody, but enough people seem like they're like, oh, I don't want to. So like you talk about your buy box and stuff. Yeah. Like my buy box when I was looking for my first house was like, I want it to kind of look like a house. Like yeah. that's all. <laughs> kind of look like a house, but I can I stick saw somebody some over that looked there. like a shed. And I'm like, I don't know about the shed, but this one has a roof line that looks kind of <laughs> like, a, but like literally everything inside and out was just horrid yeah but it was like it was mine and i loved it you know and so it's just a man and if i had to start all over like i would just do whatever you got to do go to the other area that maybe you don't prefer yeah. just because now looking back you see like i can't even imagine a life without that like i would be yeah. probably struggling to survive right now if i didn't have exactly those resources that i found back then and you don't have to be a genius or rich or anything no. like that and in any market there's a way to make it work like you can find um three you know, three and a half i mean what i would tell people is aim for five percent yeah if you only use three and a half and you got a little money for reserves or, or whatever it is but let, let's not some people i talk to and they they just instantly assume they need 20 percent. yeah like Third, don't owner know that still. Oh, yeah let, let's target five and again get creative um think about even, uh, yeah and even mortgage insurance is not even that big of a barrier anymore no. like i was talking to my preferred lender just i don't know a couple of days ago and he's like yeah it's, it's barely anything for a lot of people so yeah, it's it like 60 bucks for some people, money yeah, yeah. Like, so it used to be quite a bit it used more. to be a lot more than that yeah like three four hundred dollars a month or something you know yeah. but um so yeah i would yeah um but um yeah just like putting the mother-in-law in the basement finding a place to just i don't know just yeah, it's it's so I want to talk about that first deal at 21, right? So mm -hmm. uh at 21, what what was your job at 21? What 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 was the I worked order? as a banquet waiter at the time. I was didn't even have my real estate license right. yet. Right. That was before that. So you were a 1099 yeah. probably. Yeah, well or W2? I don't know. I basically didn't make any money. So yeah, I you were making my... nothing, right? But you had a job. <laughs> yeah, right? I had so... a job, but that, so I was able to partner with my dad and I know everyone's right. like, oh, like must be nice to have the dad or whatever, but he didn't contribute that much money. It was just enough, you know, and he was, he was a partner in the deal. So basically okay. he was on the title. We had a contract drawn up. He yep. shared in the equity. When I refinanced out, he got his half of the equity plus everything he put into it, you know, yep. and I got my credit for the repairs that I did. Yeah you know yeah so you so do you remember what what you collectively put down i mean 175 you're probably talking five or six grand yeah if we did do 20 percent down oh, you did so then that would have been 30 yeah grand. i think it was like twenty thousand dollars or something like that or 25, well, i don't know yeah, yeah. no we paid one hundred twenty five thousand dollars for that house so it was like yeah 20 percent is 25 grand yeah Okay. Yeah. And he got okay. paid back when I refied out because a couple of years later it was worth 180 or something yeah. like that. Dad, and you're out of here. You get yeah. your piece. <laughs> uh, it's now me. It's now mine. And he wanted that. He, that's what he wanted. He just wanted to get me started, you know, that's because, awesome. yeah. and I just ran with, I saw, he gave me that opportunity, which I'm very appreciative for. Sure. And we ran with it, you know, so. So it was yours post first refi. 
Correct. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Good yeah. Shout out, Dad. Yeah. But again, you. I mean, in today's world, right, with YouTube University and Bigger Pockets and all these other stuff, you really only got to get five percent. So many people just think twenty percent, twenty percent, twenty percent. Yeah. In fact, it's almost it's not worth trying to spend the time to save the twenty percent. No, because the property's going like this, and it's, you can't out save it. At least up. not in our area. You will never out save it. And um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you can use that money for reserves. People were like, well, what about if the roof leaks or what about if, I mean, I literally had everything break as soon oh, as I yeah. moved in, you know, but we just, you know, got through it, just figured it out. Yeah. yeah. So, um, do you remember yeah. what you were charging rent for that first tenant way back when 90, whatever that I was, was like $450 a month for the t basement tenant. And then what were you getting when you sold it in 17? Um, when I moved out, I rented the whole house, but I moved, I kept it after I moved into a bigger house. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, we were getting, I think 2,700 or so for the house. So, so 27 <laughs> for the house, including the basement, for, including the base. It was like one room down there. It was a yeah. tiny, it was barely a mother-in-law. Right. Yeah. That's so, great. So, yeah. yeah. So base, so it goes from, it goes from, so you were getting 400 plus your 500 covers the mortgage. And then when you exit, you're getting 2,700. So positive cash flow for sure. Right. Yeah. And also I want to point out too, because people think it's kind of humorous to see like what the interest rates were, but like yeah, back, exactly. in 1995, <laughs> back way back in 1995, it was yeah. 9.5% and interest. And you were happy to so, get it. And I was happy just, to, yeah. I mean, I didn't know any different. So, yeah. um, and, and then it just rode down after that. And I did several refis over time, but like my payment just kept getting less and less. The and more they kept handing you checks. Yeah. <laughs> That's and nice. So like when I paid dad back, I was able to actually keep my payment about the same because, mm -hmm. you know, I borrowed yeah. my, my balance went up, but the payment remained more or less the same, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. We, yeah. we've had, we've had 20 years of just, well, actually it's been 40 years. I did the research 40 years of rates like this. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. So, yeah. um, okay. So that's your story. Then you get married. He has his, you have yours. Uh, he's a contractor. You're a real estate agent. That sounds like a pretty powerful combination to me. Oh my gosh, it is. Yeah. So what we do a lot now, we look for a lot of, uh, like burr opportunities and things like that. So, mm -hmm. um, he, we have really great teams, you know, that can do whatever we need to do on the projects. And mm -hmm. so, and, um, so what I do is basically, um, I'm scanning the market, my target areas every single day, like multiple times a day, I get alerts anytime there's any status change on any listing in the area. So it's yeah. like, boom, boom, boom. And every once in a while, and not when you know your market like that, and I like to just drive around and just see what's going on too. And you're like, what's going on over there? And you just yeah. look to somebody and maybe an opportunity comes out of it, or at least you learn something, you know, every time. And then, um, uh, you know, every once in a while, something comes up where you go, Oh, that's under market. You know, like I just saw yesterday, I went racing over, yeah. you know, an hour and a half away to go take a look at some house. Cause I'm like, oh, this is worth 500 and they have it listed for 419 and it, you know, it's in the area you can Airbnb it and yada, yada, yada. So I'm like, Oh, this is it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. When you and, do the uh, work, you just, you look, I always look forward to tomorrow. Like th there's like 70 days in a row of nothing. And then like the 71st or 73rd day. Oh, there it is. That's what I've been looking yeah. for. And it's super exciting when that happens because yeah. when you when you know it, you know it. And like the minute it hits your feed, you're just like, oh, this is That's it. That's the one. Call the you agent. You don't have to sit there and think about it and agonize and run all. I mean, I run numbers and stuff still, but I'm just like, you just know what you know. And so it's yeah. easy to just jump in and then you can make a really strong offer too, you know. That one ended up not being a fit for us for reasons I won't get into now, but it's like, I had the offer all written up, yeah. like cash as is, no contingencies, nothing. Cause we, that's what we can do. We know it well enough to know right. we can do that. Yeah. So, that's, that's what I'm trying to teach people, right? It's, it's focus and daily discipline in the buy box. You just got it. Too many people want to get out of the buy box too fast. Yeah. Right. No. I mean, you got to stay in this little area. I was in my buy box for almost three years. Cause again, it's, I never lived there. I mean, it was, I just, yeah. you know, I was all over the world. Right. But, you know, once you figure it out, then you can expand. But too many people want to rush it because if you just take a knowledge from your buy box and you go like 20 minutes this way and you use the same stuff, you could get a, you could really hurt yourself. Will not work. So like our little areas that we focus on in particular, they're kind of the ones that sort of fly under the radar, but are mm -hmm. massively appreciating and um, kind of like a little bit of hidden gems, but not really, I mean, secrets getting out. So I might have to find <laughs> a different area soon, but, no. but it's like, literally, like you're saying, if I go 20 minutes to the West, I'm in Bellevue where everything costs $2 million and mm -hmm. forget it, you know? Yeah. So 
and then you go 20 minutes the other way and it's like a totally different market, you know? Exactly. So you're right. Like it does make sense to be like granularly down to like, I know each block, you know, yeah. it's like, oh, that one's got this issue. That one's in the floodway. That one butts up against commercial or yep. whatever, whatever it is. You know? yeah. And those are all fine. You know, not that I won't buy those necessarily, but you got to oh. know the whole story, you know, yeah. so, got to be adjusted. <laughs> yeah. And I also, I know like, okay, this one has this issue. We can go in there and we can fix it. We look for the ones that like your regular first time home buyer, for example, can't buy. Yeah. So the, I like to get the entry level houses in the really great areas in the good school districts, you mm -hmm. know? So it's like, and we, we did one burr a few years ago. That's one of my favorites. It probably is one will hold forever, but like it was a shell, like it didn't have a kitchen. Oh, wow. And like, oh, great. This won't qualify for financing. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. FHA, nobody can play. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone wants it. Nobody can buy it, but yes. we can, you know, we, yeah. and that one we had, I like to use lines of credit, you know, so we used a HELOC on our house, you know, mm -hmm. on that one paid cash did the reno, you know, we knew exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. God. And that one was zoned. It could be commercial or residential use. And for a while we rented out commercially and then we ended up renting it out uh, residentially, but um, it's just kind of cool. And later we could tear it down and build townhomes, you know, cause it, they upzone that area and people don't nice. know that, you know? So it's like, it just hit all these different little boxes and we were able to pull our money out and, you know, it's, the price has gone up. I mean, just, just in the last year it went up. 30%, you know, so you know, <laughs> well, that, like, that doesn't suck. No, it does not suck. Yeah. So, and the rents are crazy high, you know, yeah. and people are loving to li live there and pay it happily. Yeah. So Pretty that's amazing. like a win, a win for me that I really, um, yeah, that's awesome. But if we didn't know, we weren't ready you can spot that opportunity, then it would have just, you know, I talked to other agents, even a lot of agents don't really understand the investment side of things, you know, no. a vast majority, two very different worlds that don't really intersect that much. Mm -hmm. That's why I love talking to you and other people where it's like, oh, these people get it. <laughs> a lot of people on my real estate side, we talk about other things, but they don't really, it's just, it doesn't really compute. But yeah, like, they, they walk people, into a shell going, oh, this yeah, is going to like, be what hard do you to do sell. With that? It only had, a, it doesn't even have a shower in there. I'm like, well, you put the shower in. Yeah. I don't, yeah so it's just it like, takes about a day and a half. I'm good. <laughs> Anyway, because I talked to, they were like, I don't see how that makes sense. I'm like, trust me, just watch, you yeah, know, just watch. That's funny. you can't listen too much to those people. You know, you get, if you know what you know, and the people that you respect are yeah. coaching you properly, then you know what to do. Yeah, and you just got to trust that. Yeah. Do the work. Yeah. Trust you. What, what I, again, daily discipline and focus is all I talk about. And, and you just, you just build confidence in yourself. You're kind of inoculating yourself from all these, all these people that haven't done the work. Yeah. I, I, people tell me all the time, I can't believe you're a real estate investor. It's like, well, how many do you own? Zero. I would never do that. Oh, okay. Well, I know. My story. How many they know had a bad experience or something? <laughs> I don't want to deal with clogged toilets. You know, last time I dealt with a clogged toilet, that would be never. Never. <laughs> yeah, I've never once unclogged a toilet. Yeah. But nice. anyway, yeah. So, and it's, you know, never take advice from people that aren't doing it. And I have to tell you, yeah. all my favorite best deals, there was all, there was somebody always saying that didn't, it was not a good deal. Yes, I have. To. And they were never the people that were, you know, that, that we're walking the walk. Yeah. So. Well, tell us about that first 1031. I know when I did my first 1031, I was like, this can't be this easy. This can't be like, cause I sold a house and bought an apartment with the equity and yeah, it was, it was so good. I did it seven or eight more times. So uh, <laughs> how was yours? Oh yeah. So that it was actually a different house is my first 1031, but basically we took a house that everyone has these houses in there if that been doing this for a while that maybe they just didn't really like for whatever reason. We has one house that has always got bad tenants. I don't mm -hmm. wasn't just the best unlucky. area. It wasn't yeah. it wasn't a bad area, but it wasn't the great area either. And it was the only house we ever had to actually evict somebody from start to finish out of. And when they left, I was just kind of like, you know, I just not feeling this house anymore. So we just mm -hmm. 1031 did it and we bought a vacation rental. This was back in 20 when was it? Like 20 16, 2017. Okay. And in an area that's like an hour away from Seattle up in the mountains that mm -hmm. um, is a popular vacation. It was already turnkey with everything in it, you know? Okay. And um, I'm telling you, we didn't know at the time, but that has ended up being one of the best. <laughs> I bet. If I could take that junky house that wasn't even cash flowing very well that I hated, you know, yeah. and like turn, and now we have a cab, an awesome cabin that we get to use sometimes. You can use it up to 14 days a year, by the way, as far mm -hmm. as like the guidelines go. Mm -hmm. We did it all legit, you know, and it's managed now and it brings, it grosses anywhere between four, or no, no nets anywhere between four and $6,000 a month. Oh, 
Darn it. And the prices have gone up from yeah. like in one year, it went from five seventy five to nine hundred thousand dollars in <laughs> one year because all the flight out of Seattle, people buying those short term yeah. rentals over there. That's amazing. Has been amazing. So anyway, just a little, I, I'm going to toot my horn a little bit on that one. But I would say like, yeah, yeah my, um, great. Uh, that was our first 1031. And I have to say that was wonderful. Yeah. And all we we didn't have to put any additional money in. No, me neither. Yeah, we, just... we netted a hundred and something or whatever from that sale. And we just rolled it straight into, you have to do it right. So if yep. anybody's watching about this, don't think you can do it after the fact. You have no. to have a qualified intermediary. You never touch the money. It goes flows straight through them to the. Yeah. Through Typically it sits here for a little while, right? Sell, sits yeah. here, then goes there. Yeah. yeah. You touch the money. The boot, or they call it, you're that's not good. Don't do that. Yeah. Then you're taxed. Yeah. Yep. So good. it can't. Somebody asked me the other day who I'd never met before. They're like, "Hey, we want to do a 1031 exchange, and the house closed a couple months ago." And I'm like, eh, "If it's not, if you didn't start it already, and you already no, have the you, money, it's you actually late. yeah. It, it, like when you list your house, you act, or at least I had to. I had to declare seller intends to 1031 because there's extra forms that have to be filled out and all of that. Right. Yeah. And it's not that much. I think no. it's about like a thousand, fifteen hundred bucks or something like that. But, well worth um, it. Yeah. It's totally worth it. Yeah. We've done a few since then, you know, um, and I have to say there's been a couple of them where if it made sense for us strategically, we did, we did pay the tax a couple of times, you know, sure. it wasn't the end of the world. Sometimes it's like people get so scared of paying the tax and it wasn't that much, you know, and it just depends on what we needed to do with the money at the mm -hmm. time, you know, and sometimes if it feels like you want a little more time to find the right deal and not have to find it within 45 days, it makes more sense to just yeah. pay it potentially, but, um, plan yeah, for I, it, you know, set that money aside. Yeah. I did so. that. Uh, the last apartment I sold, we just paid the taxes. Cause I didn't want to, I didn't want to roll into a bad deal. I'm like, okay, I'll just pay it, whatever it is. And, um, uh, yeah, I'll just sit on the cash. Until yeah, we later. have one closing next week that um, we're just going to pay the gain, the capital gains tax. Yeah, just um, call it a day. Yeah. Because I can't find, you know, I just don't know that I'm going to be able to find anything. And we have other uses for the money right now. So we're just going to yeah. do that strategically, you yeah. know, but it, it will be buying something. I hate to sell an asset that's yes. cash flowing and not have it. Something. We will. I just want to do it on our own time. Yeah, your own time. That that yeah. uh, identification and closing, those those timelines can add a lot of pressure. Yeah, and right now in this crazy market, it's like, I don't want to buy, buy something just to buy it fast, you know? No, me neither. Yeah. yeah. So, so, if I, so if I understand this right, you start with house hacking, you've done buy and hold, you've done Burr, you've done short term, I'll call it Airbnb, maybe it's VRBO, whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, geez, do you have a favorite? <laughs> Um, yeah, well, like the, the burr really is my favorite. And okay. so right now when I'm working on, thankfully, because we've been in this so long, mm -hmm. you know, 20 years, we have a ton of equity. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm at the point where, you know, I'm later on in my career where I don't want to be super over leveraged, you know, yep. yeah. um, especially like when people have been burned severely, like we were in that downturn, like you yeah. get a little skittish about just borrow, 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 borrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because you know, I know that like that the carpet can be the party out, could end. Be ready. <laughs> so I don't want to get stuck. We're upside down where we don't have equity and all that. So mm -hmm. um, so we try to keep our you know max our loan to value not more than like 35% or so. Wow. I was I know I was, I was gonna guess 50, 35. Oh no, no, but we're gonna we're getting some HELOCs now. So I've uh, got three in place right now. So we can it may bump up a little bit temporarily because our yeah. last our 1031 that we did earlier this year, a different one, we bought a house where it was like a fixer house and, and five lots that mm. came with it. Yeah. So we're going to work on building out those lots and fixing the fixer house. And so I'm going to get a HELOC on. So yeah, real quick, I'm going to, we paid cash through the 1031 for the fixer house and the lots. And so we're going to get a heel, we're getting a HELOC on the house. Okay. To fix the house, burr the money back out yep. and then use it to like build on the other lots and kind of recycle that cash. One so at a time. Exactly. Probably one at a time. So that way we can just sort of. Yeah. The same capital is reused. It. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll have, you know, up to, you know, five cash flowing houses. And it's, that's in an area, that same vacation rental area where oh, nice. it, the numbers work to do uh, long-term rentals or short-term rentals. So you got multiple exit strategies or we could sell one, you know, just, I just love it. It's all these possibilities. Yeah. And it all came about just because of just, you know, waiting around and, and just letting the market do what it does. Right. And then you have like, 
this equity and you know <laughs> money to to strategize time in the market is better than timing the market so true i've never once tried to time it because i can tell you after being in real estate and working with home buyers for 20 plus years there has never been a time that people thought was like this is the great time to buy and you Mm -hmm. know if people always think that there's they always have some reason why it's not the right time to buy that Mm -hmm. never changes yeah, so, it's pretty crazy. I yeah. want to ask about Airbnb and short-term rentals because I love the fact that you said it plays for both long-term or short-term or month-to-month or year leases. Yeah. I think something that's going on in, in markets that I watch is Airbnb is getting a little too competitive. Lots of people are going that direction. Prices are going up, so it almost only works if you Airbnb it. People are getting into areas that aren't the unique areas that are now kind of B middle class. Yeah. I suspect Airbnb is going to have a rough year or two, you know, a year from now because supply and demand is undefeated in my opinion. I agree. And I've been thinking about oh. that too, because we were going to do a 1031 into another, that one that we decided just to take the gain on that's closing mm-hmm. next week. We were going to take that and buy like a luxury, like let's buy a luxury lodge that can bring in a hundred, whatever thousand a year or whatever. And maybe, but like the, the numbers, when I was running those numbers, I'm like, this only works only works. short-term rental. And if for some reason people decide they don't want to do that anymore, or they're going back to work or the market, or the city changes adjusts, or whatever. Yeah. There's is, and we have seen that happen. Almost every market has had, someone has come in and changed the rules and then you can't do it anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it really needs to work both ways. Um, exactly. And then that area that one I was telling you about where ours went up so dramatically in value, it's precisely because of people run, running into that market to buy these. And also Seattle has had a lot of new legislation that has come in, even just this last week, even more. Oh, I could go on a rant, but I won't. But (laughs) trust me, it's pretty extreme to the point where a lot of uh, landlords are pulling out Out, the Seattle proper market and they're just they're just running the numbers on it. These aren't people looking for second homes. They're like, we're getting this much here. We can take this million dollars from Seattle and put that million dollars over at this mountain cabin and. Mm -hmm you know, Airbnb it and you don't have to deal with any landlord tenant stuff and you get all this great return, Mm -hmm. but it's run up the market. um, It it feels a little, it just feel it, it, it feels frothy to me. Yeah. And, and again, I experienced the last time and thankfully I got out, right. I felt it. I couldn't buy another deal. So I 1031 into apartments, best thing I ever did. It just, yeah. It just feel Airbnb is awesome. I think if you have the right property, it makes total sense. I just see people down selecting now and only doing deals if, if they can short-term rental. And I, I don't see that being a winning strategy in a year or two. It's, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna reverse. I think it's oversaturated. Yes, exactly. Supply and demand. Undefeated. Yeah. I feel like that is kind of jumped the shark a bit as much as I love it. And I love ours is probably our best cash flowing. You know, it is our best cash flowing property. Yeah, four grand a month's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> but we bought it for 430 and now we didn't pay 900 or whatever people yeah. are paying now, you know? So, yeah, cool. and it's seasonal too. You gotta, you gotta be ready. Like there's certain times, thankfully in that area, summer and winter are high season, but like spring, nobody's there, you know? So you gotta uh-huh. be ready to ride those ups and downs and, yeah. um, but yeah, I, I'm watching that really closely and I was super hot on it. And now I'm starting to kind of pull back a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I'll still consider it, but oh, of course, yeah, it's just not priority one. It's not option. Yeah, it's one. gotta be like that one. We just, I talked about that fixer that could be either one. It's like, oh, make total. If it can be either one, one, I'm game. It's just, yeah. it's the onlys that freak me out a little bit. I know. And if we can like rent it out for 2,500 a month or something or get, or you Airbnb it and you might. I don't, if it, if it's not in one of those areas that, you know, it's, if it's like a B area, not an A area, mm-hmm. I don't know that we'd do better. No, and it's certainly easier just to get somebody in there long term yeah. and just not think about it. Not think so, about it. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I guess a couple of things as we kind of wrap this up, I want you to talk to the young ladies out there, the 21, 22 year old, what would you tell, what would you tell her, right? Let's assume she stumbles across this, yeah. sees you. And what would you tell that young lady? Well, I would say um, that you can do it. A lot of people think it's not for them. Mm. And I remember when I was growing up, I never thought I was going to be some real estate entrepreneur or whatever. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was clueless, you know, (laughs) and I was just like, I didn't go to college. I felt like, I don't know what I'm meant to do in this world, you know? Mm. 
Um, and then uh, came across this. Thankfully, there's a lot more information out there now and a lot more community. Like all you got to do is like, you know, like watch your YouTube channel, go interact in the Facebook groups, just put yourself out there. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there is so much support out there if you know where to look. So if I was going to talk to a young person today looking to get into this or, or even not young, somebody just wants to get into it, I would say, first, you know, just, just get into that community. And mm-hmm. I, I like to, cause your, your, your brain is telling you things all the time, not to, and the outside world is telling you things all the time. And you really got to control as much as you can, the flow of what's going in there. Totally agree. And that's why I like to listen to like these YouTube channels and other things where it's just like, you know, podcasts of people talking about like what I like to talk about and doing things that I like to do, because even if you don't personally know those people, like you kind of do get to sort of vicariously start to feel what that feels like. And one of the things I think is really important is visualizing yourself doing it, not in the future, but now. So the key to it is just, so like when I was trying to build my real estate business, I'd be like, I want to do 50 deals a year. Not like I'm going to, then you start thinking like, I do do that, or I do own five properties, or I do buy, I do own a a house hack. I'm an investor, whatever it is that you, your goal is start saying where, put that put that on and, and wear that, you know, in the present and spend some time every day. You know, I did the miracle morning and I've gotten kind of, I still get up early, but I don't necessarily do all the visualization and meditation that I sh- probably should do. But I did do that for years and it really did help to like experience what that feels like. What's my day like as a real estate investor? You know, mm-hmm. what does that do? That's or, nice. you know, and, and just imagine yourself doing it. You can do it. The other thing I want to let people know too, is like, you can handle more than you think. Like I could tell you, Oh my gosh. I think I heard an episode of your show here. You're talking like horror stories. And I love those horror stories. Now is it such a, you get something to laugh about, you know? Like, yes. Oh my gosh. Remember it was, when it yeah. was terrible at the time. And we all thought it was going to be the end of the world when, uh, I don't know. Oh my gosh. I won't get into it, but there's some really, really, uh, uh doozies, but you know, <laughs> you just, you realize, you know what, you're going to get stuff thrown at you and it also becomes a game. You're like, okay, mm-hmm. now, now someone's throwing this obstacle and how do you get around that? You know? Nice. And then you just, you get around it. And this is not like, you can handle it. You can do it. You will survive it. You know, you get a bad tenant. Okay. You learn, you get better at screening, you outsource what you're not good at, whatever it is, you know, you, you refine and you improve and you learn and then you have good stories. Nice. So, yeah. Yeah. So if somebody wanted to follow or reach out to you, Beth, how would you like them to do that? Yeah. So um, they can reach out to me. Um, at my website is Beth Traverso group.com. Okay. And so I'm Beth at Beth Traverso Group, which is T R A V E R S O. Maybe it's down in the notes or something. Yep. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, or I'm on the Facebook groups a lot, the bigger pocket Facebook groups, or just um, myself on Facebook. And I'll be at the BP Con. Uh, I'm leaving tomorrow. So if Ooh. anybody's heading down there and wants to say hi, feel free to there you go. give me a shout. So yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you for doing this. Congratulations. Sure. A lot of fun. Uh, I love you. this conversation. This was thanks. a blast. All right. All right. Thanks, Michael. Mm-hmm. Bye.